speak it. Um, when Dallas was in Ecuador, but the kids and I were sick, and I'm so glad that, I'm not saying that, I'm glad we were sick. I'm so glad that I didn't get to speak, because Caitlin did, and she did a phenomenal job. Did y'all just really enjoy Caitlin's sermon? So good, right? Man, I loved it. I was like just crying in my office listening to it, and it's so funny because it's actually like a prequel, if that's a word. Um, it's it goes in line with what I was actually going to speak about, and it's almost like God needed to speak that first so he could kind of come in with this. And so I'm so excited to kind of follow up on this. Um, It's not really the same topic, but I think it goes hand in hand. So today I want to talk about the peace of God. I feel like I'm really loud. Am I loud? Okay. I just can't yell. You know, sometimes I get to yelling, and I don't want to make anyone go deaf, but it's a good thing Jesus heals. Okay, so today we're going to talk about the peace of God, and what does that really mean? I feel like it's something in the church that kind of has been cliche. I feel like um, as I was starting to discover this, I was really discovering that we, I feel like we've almost seen it all wrong. In my life, when I talk about the peace of God, or when people come to me, they're like, hey, will you pray that I have peace? Will you pray? It's always something that, to me, seems external that we're trying to receive and strive to get internally, when I don't believe that that's actually the biblical definition and how you see peace talked about in the Bible. And so today I hope that our minds are just open to what God is, what it, what is peace? Peace is everything. I would say that the majority of people, um, they're on a quest for peace, peace with themselves, peace with the situation, peace with the circumstance, peace with God, peace with other people. It's all about how can I get peace, 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 world peace. Even the hippies get it, you know? And so I'd say, I would say that it's a general desire for every human being to want to encounter peace. So what is peace? How do you get it? What are the functions of peace? What is peace not? We're going to go cover all of it. Are y'all ready? So I heard this recently that one of the number one reasons for prescribed medication is actually stress and anxiety, which to me is not peace, right? To me, I I would say that that's the opposite of peace in some sort of way. We live in a culture where it's like, everyone I feel like around me is anxious. Oh, this makes me anxious. This makes me anxious. Like the anxiety is running rampant everywhere, in the world, in the church, everywhere. And that's not how God intended it. Romans 15, 13 says this, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay, time out. This is one verse, but there's so much in here that I believe we just look over. Okay, let's read this again. May the God of hope, so God is a hopeful, a hopeful God, right? Fill you with all joy and peace when? As you trust in him. Okay, so what this is telling me is that peace actually is something that comes after trust in him. As I trust in him, then I receive peace. So in order to have peace, you must trust in him. Are you following me? So that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. So we have in these things, we have joy and peace, we have trust, and we also have hope. So this is what I would suggest to all of us in this room. It's actually in trust that we find peace, and it's actually in peace that we find hope. So if you're actually feeling hopeless, it's not that you need hope. It's actually that you need peace, but you can't have peace until you have trust So we don't have hopelessness problems. We don't have depression problems. We don't have anxiety problems. We have trust issues. Does that make sense? A lack of peace is not an anxiety issue. A lack of peace is a trust issue. And that's what we see in our culture serious trust issues. Why? Because we've been hurt. Because someone said they're going to do something and they didn't do it. Because we've, you know, people haven't treated us correctly. Because we've had this high expectation that just didn't quite get met. So we have these trust issues, right? 
Isaiah 26, 3 says this, You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. Here again we see that peace is actually found in our trust. Peace has less to do with your circumstances. Peace has less to do with what's going on and oh this and oh that and the world's all going to hell in a handbasket and all these things that are happening. Peace actually has to do with two things, really one. But God, in your trust, in him, that he is who he says he is and he's going to do what he says he's going to do. If I can trust God, then I have no need to worry. If I've really believed he is who he says he is and he can do what he says he's going to do, then I have no reason to be anxious. If God is the ultimate source of power in my life and I walk into a room and he's with me, then there should be no reason to have anxiety. And I'm not, I'm not hating on anyone that has anxiety. Please don't understand that. But what I am saying is I think that we have the diagnosis wrong. I think that we don't have anxiety problems. I think we have trust problems. Romans 14, 6 through 18 says this, Therefore do not let what you know is good to be spoken of as evil. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Because anyone who serves Christ in this way is pleasing to God and receives human approval. This is what I know is that we live in a place where we can access the kingdom of heaven here and now. That's actually God's design, is that when we have him, we have everything we need. When it's eternal, so you have eternal salvation. So let me kind of put it this way. You're not waiting to get to heaven and then eternity starts. Your eternity has already started. So you as a believer, if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and he lives within you, which he does if you have said, yes, come into my heart, then you're already actually experiencing a heaven, a heaven reality of eternal, eternity right here and now. And so these are the things, is when I look at your life, when I look at my life, I'm, I'm almost like, okay, this doesn't line up. You can tell the degree of which someone is experiencing the reality of heaven here and now by these three things, the righteousness, peace, and joy. That's what it says. These are the things of the kingdom. It's not eating or drinking. It's not your behavior, which is how I would put it. It's not what you're doing. It's not your actions. This is the, this is the kingdom. It's righteousness, peace, and joy. And I would say that a lot of us really love the righteousness aspect because who doesn't like to feel right with God? Who doesn't like to be like, oh, things are as they should be, is like I have to describe it. But when it comes to peace and joy, peace is really hard to find for most people. And joy is just weird in the church. That's the reality. Someone starts laughing and you're like, oh my gosh, that's disturbing. You need to tell them to stop. Maybe they're actually experiencing a piece of heaven that you need to step into because you have the same access that they do. You're just too prideful to enter in. Righteousness, peace, and joy. Colossians 3.15 says this. Let the peace of Christ rule in your heart since as members of one body you were called to peace and be thankful. This is what I love. It's the peace of Christ. It's the peace of Christ that rules our hearts. And I love this phrase right here. You were called to peace. Did you know that? To me, that just releases a freedom. Like if I, someone came to me and actually said, you are called to peace. I think it releases freedom because our mind has been worked to believe that God is withholding peace and we have to continue to ask God, God, just give me peace, just give me peace, just give me peace. But when I say, actually, you were destined for peace, you were not supposed to ever live in a situation where there is not peace, that totally is contrary to how we believe it. We wouldn't say it, but that's like consciously how we think. Because we have defined peace is, we'll get to it, our comfort zone. You were never destined to live in any circumstance, walk into any room, have any conversation without the essence of peace within you. 
Never. You were called to peace. Okay, what is peace not? Peace is not an external substance that you can obtain. It's an internal substance that you already possess if you're a believer. You are not reaching for peace. (laughs) Does that make sense? There was a time, so I dated too many guys. And until I finally found the one, the love of my life. Um, And when we were dating, we, like, we had been dating, I don't know, a couple months. We didn't date long before we got married. But we had been dating a couple months. And I remember, I don't remember exactly where I was, but I remember I had, like, this freak-out moment. And I was like, God, I haven't even asked you if it's okay to date him. Like, I haven't even asked you. I'm, I was definitely like, oh, don't take a step because God's going to smite you if you go the wrong direction and all this stuff, this, this bogusness. And so um, I was like, I haven't even asked you if this is okay. Like, I'm dating him. We've already talked about getting married, and I haven't even gotten your permission. And I just remember him saying, Natalie, you don't have to ask for things you already have. And I said, what do you mean by that, God? And he said, you already have peace, so you're not asking me for peace. Every other relationship in my life, I was continually saying, God, give me peace, give me peace, just give me peace. And what he was actually doing was showing me that that guy was not for me. Because listen, if God's in it, there's peace. You're not asking for peace. Now, you may need to get trust in what he's doing. That's different. That's fear. That's anxiety. That's not peace. You may need to grow in your trust. I'm not saying you won't be uncomfortable. But what I'm saying is I never have to ask for things I already have. And if God's in it, I already have it. You see in the Bible all the time, he's like, go, peace be with you, peace be with you, peace be with you. I mean, there's different, there's like five different words in the Greek or Hebrew with uh, peace. And some of it's like, go make peace with your brother. or uh, He gave a peace or he was at peace, like rest. Um, but the, one of the ones is actually an assurance and confidence in your salvation and who God is. That's where peace is derived. And I just know so many times that I was asking for peace and God never gave it to me because he was not in what I was asking for peace in. And I thought it was the enemy. I'm feeling anxious. I just need to rebuke the devil and he's going to resist him and he'll flee and all these things. And actually it was like, no, I didn't have peace. And it was actually God saying, no, I'm not ordaining this situation right here. Does that make sense? Okay. So you know if you have peace, if it's not what you're asking for. Let me just say this again. We're not reaching for peace. We're reaching for him. Not that he's far because he's within us. We're reaching for trusting in him would be a better way to put it. We're not reaching for peace. Peace is not your comfort zone. If peace was your comfort zone, there would be no need for faith. Why? Because faith is actually something, the assurance of hope, which is funny because, you know, remember the first scripture we read, hope comes from the peace that comes from trust. So it's actually the the assurance of things hoped for. It's actually saying, God, I'm going to take the step and you're going to meet me. If peace was actually found in comfort zone, there would be no need for faith. And as believers, I believe it's our ultimate goal (laughs) to create gaps in our life that only God can fill. Why? I mean, there's several reasons why. Because I believe that that's actually when it brings glory to him. When something happens, God, if you don't show up, This all fails. There's a situation in our life right now. My husband and I are in the process of making a huge financial business decision. Huge. It's like, I mean, huge. The biggest decision I might have ever made in my life when it comes to outside of marriage and God. And it's huge. And there's a reality of like, I've had peace about it the whole time. And I haven't even, like, it, it, it's kind of the same thing with Dallas. Like, it's like, God, I haven't even asked you about this. Are you sure this is right? 
but I know that he's, he has done this. It is not in my comfort zone to do this, what we're embarking on. Not at all. It's not in my comfort zone at all. I'm very, um, I mean, a stay-at-home mom slash church slash designer, all these things. I do all this stuff, but I pretty much get to create my own schedule. I pretty much get to go at my own pace. And like the biggest fear in doing this was, God, I'm really comfortable with my pace of life right now. I get to sleep in if I want. I get to, I mean, I don't have to get dressed six days of the week. Like, I mean, there's so much that's comfortable about it. But I know that there's peace in it. And I know if there's peace in it, then whatever God's going to, whatever he's calling me to, he's going to sustain. And he's going to be my sustainer through all of it. But I know it's where he's leading because I know that there's peace. And I have not once had to say, God, will you give me peace in this? Because where he leads, he provides peace. We've got to get that. Where he leads, he provides peace. He never leads with anxiety. Or fear, or control, or manipulation. He leads with peace. His words carry peace. He is the essence of peace, which we'll get to. Okay, number one, peace was not external substance you can obtain, but it's an internal substance that you possess. Two, peace is not your comfort zone. Three, peace is not avoiding confrontation. (laughs) This is what we think it is. I was running a conference one time, and we had a bunch of people on our team, and I had consulted this other lady who was on my team, and I said, man, I really don't know what to do. I just want you to pray. I don't, I don't like just most of the time just making decisions, and sorry, all y'all have to just, you know, I'm going to do this, and this is the way, and the only way, and blah, blah, blah. I really like to consult. Hey, I would like for you to pray about this. Would you tell me what you thought about it? Is there a better idea? And so I was consulting this friend of mine, and um, she was on our team, and she said, yeah, I just wouldn't say anything because I don't want to ruffle the feathers. Let's just keep the peace. And my response was probably kind of not tact, let's say that. I was just like, that to me is not keeping peace. And that's what I said. I said, to me, that's superficial peace. Because peace is not, okay, I don't want to offend you, so let's just not talk about it. Let's just stuff it in the corner and not discuss. Let's not confront. Let's not be, have brave communication. Like, that's not peace. That's passivity. <laughs> and peace is not passivity. Peace is not avoiding confrontation. Just because you're afraid of hurting someone's feelings. Or you don't want to have the hard conversation. That's not peace. Where is peace found? Number one, submission to God. John 16, says this. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble. But take heart because I have overcome the world. This verse makes peace have nothing to do with you besides you believe in what God is saying. This is peace in him, right? And take heart because I have overcome the world. He said, he didn't say take heart because I know you're strong enough to get through this. You just buckle your bootstraps and let's go. He said, no, peace in me. And then he says, take heart because he's already overcome it. The problem is, is we don't believe that. So that's where our anxiety comes in. That's where our fear comes in. Because we don't actually trust that he's overcome it. Did you know that the best person to ask for any solution to anything is God? God, there's no problem in your life that you have right now that God does not already have an answer to. Sometimes we just need to ask him. And then when he tells us, this is the harder thing to do. It's easy to ask. It's hard to believe what he says. God, this situation is just this person, and I just don't know. They really hurt my feelings. Should I trust again? Should I not? I don't know. How do I have healthy boundaries? How do I keep my love on? All these things. And he says, you just need to trust me. And I'm like, okay. (laughs) It's easy to ask. Sometimes it's hard to trust. Isaiah 9, 6 says this. For a child is born to us, a son is given to us, the government will rest on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. One of the names of God is Prince of Peace. And this is what I love. 
is that God doesn't just possess peace. He is peace. So when he is with you, God with us, another name for him is Emmanuel, God with us. That's what it means. So when he is with you, there's actually the essence of peace with you. So this might sound harsh. So to live in any other reality is to not acknowledge his presence and his power that's actually within you. Anxiety, this might sound harsh, is a choice to acknowledge that God might not be as powerful as he says he is. Fear is a choice. Why? Because when you have a choice, that means that there's realities right set before you. You get to choose peace, which encompasses trusting God. Or you get to choose fear, which actually encompasses trusting your situations to determine your reality. Is this making sense? Again, I don't want you to feel any condemnation. I just want you to realize that you actually have power over this thing called anxiety and fear that is plaguing the church. What does it mean to make peace? It's actually the assurance and confidence in God within us in our salvation. Peace is found only in dependence upon the Holy Spirit. But you won't find it in him if you don't trust him. I can trust Dallas that he loves me. Wrong way. If I don't trust Dallas that he loves me, I'll never find love in him. Does that make sense? If I don't trust God has my best interest in mind, that he's there to protect me, that he's there to work all things for my good, that he's going to provide for me, that he's going to do everything that he says he's going to do, I will never find my peace in him. And the sad thing about that is you'll never find it in anything else because nothing else can give you peace but him. And I want to make this attainable to you. The fact that you find peace in him is good news because if you're a believer, he's in you. So there is no distance. There is no going to him and saying, God, give me peace. This is a recognition that inside of you is the indwelling of Jesus, the Holy Spirit, God himself, in the essence of peace. You go nowhere to find it, but you just have to trust in it. Peace is found in submission to God. That was number one. Number two, prayer and thanksgiving. Philippians 4, 6 through 7 says this. Be anxious for nothing. Nothing. But in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. In the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Okay, here's another one of those scriptures. So much in here. We just, whoop, 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 read over. Yeah, I heard that. Don't be anxious. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Okay, so we're praying, right? Peace is found in prayer and thanksgiving. It says, and the peace of God. So it's almost like a then. Prayer, petition, thanksgiving, then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and your minds in Jesus. I've never read it like this until last night. Maybe it was last week, whatever week. The guard of your heart is actually peace. This is why this is important. <laughs> the guard of your mind is actually peace. Do you know where lies come in? In your mind, in your thoughts. This is why this is so extreme to me. If you don't have peace and trust in God, then you are more susceptible and you are more vulnerable to the lies of the enemy, which then create fear, which then create anxiety, which then create depression. And it's all because a trust issue with God. 
Because peace, literally, I want you to just close your eyes and imagine your heart and your mind. Everyone knows everything that floods in every day, every single moment, every single day. There's lies, there's lies, there's lies, there's lies. And peace is actually the guard to those lies. Without peace, (laughs) do you see the cycle? It's like, how do you get peace? Because I'm anxious and I'm fearful and I don't trust and all these things. But without peace, you're more vulnerable to the lies that continue to come in. Are you tracking? It is our guard. This is the other thing, prayer and thanksgiving. (laughs) Bill Johnson said this, and I'm not quoting it exactly, but this is what stuck out to me. Prayer doesn't actually work in your favor if you don't transfer the burden to God. (laughs) God, I just pray that you'll just help my son get saved and encounter you. You know that doesn't do anything for your anxiety if you're trying to carry the burden and pray. It's just words. Prayer is actually a transfer of power. God, I am releasing this, my power to do this circumstance because I know you can and I wasn't made to carry this. But what happens is we feel better because we pray and we release it. We do all these things. But then a week goes by and we're just like, oh my gosh, I just can't believe it. He's not doing good and blah, 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 blah. What happened to the trust? You won't find peace in that prayer. Until you learn to trust. Prayer is an act of trust. God, I can't do this, but you can. God, I can't heal my mom, but you can. God, I can't figure out all these finance problems, but you can. And I'm not only going to ask you to do something, I'm actually going to let you do something, and I'm going to transfer this burden onto you because that's where my trust comes in, that's where my peace comes in, and then peace develops hope. Does it make sense? all connected number three where is peace found it's found in our focus on God Romans 8 6 says this the mind governed by the flesh is death another version says like the mind that's constantly focused on the flesh is death but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace it's when we get our mind on our problems instead of the power of God that our peace turns into anxiety fear and striving We've said this before, but wherever, whatever has your focus, has your worship, what you behold, you become. You know, Caitlin talked about in her message, um, you know, when things seem chaotic, she gets down and she, she gets with God and he told her to write a thank you note. I did that I, I, as her sermon. Like, I heard it and I was like, man, this is great. The next day I did it. And so much, because why? Peace is found in prayer and petition, but also because prayer does something about focusing, realigning your eyes to see him instead of everything going on around you. And when you learn to transfer that burden, it's like, okay, God, not only do I have to see this mess, but I don't even have to deal with this mess because you're going to deal with it. And whew, I can breathe. That's where peace is found. In him doing the heavy lifting and you saying, God, what's my part? Because your part, he's actually empowered you to do. But he has not empowered you to do his part. And that's a lot of time where we step up. And we say, no, God, I got this. He hasn't given you a grace to do what only he can do. (laughs) He's given you a grace what he's called you to do in that situation. And sometimes it's a lot more. And sometimes it's nothing but trusting. God, I'm going to sit on this and I'm going to trust you. And I'm going to pray. I'm going to continue to pray. And not only pray, but I'm actually going to believe you're going to do something, even if it takes years. What does peace do? These are the functions of peace. Number one, peace guides us. Psalm 119, 165. Abundant peace belongs to those who love your instruction. Nothing can make them stumble. Peace is tangible. It's something you feel and experience. Um, we, I've said this before, but God, wherever God leads, you will find peace. If peace isn't there in the midst of something, maybe because he's, that's not where he's leading you. Jimmy Evans said this, some decisions are not right and wrong. They're actually right and right. And peace is what tells us the difference of which one we should take. Where there's a lack of peace, 
there's a lack of presence. Have you ever gone to like, sorry if anyone shops here or has shopped here. Um, have you ever just gone into, I won't, I won't name that. <laughs> have you ever just gone into a store and you're like, man, it's so dark in here. I feel like there's spiders crawling on me and I don't want to look at anything and a demon might be around the corner. And I mean, not that we're afraid of demons, we have power, but what, just, you know what I'm talking about. You go into a place and you're just like, ugh, this feels disgusting. Where there's a lack of peace, there's a lack of presence. But let me say the flip side of this so you don't get all confused. Peace is within you. So when you walk into a situation, you bring peace with you. But there's different atmospheres like our home. Dallas and I have complete authority over the atmosphere because we are the head. There's something about spiritual government and spiritual structure and all these different things. If I go into a store and the owners of the store are you know, don't carry peace, then there's a level of peace that I can experience in their store, but there's still a level, uh, like a, a metron that's going on in the spiritual atmosphere that they created, if that makes sense. <clears throat> but where there, there is a lack of peace, there's a lack of presence. There's a lack of trust. God leads us through peace. There was a friend that was going to come live with me. Um, I traveled the world for a year doing missionary work, and she was one of my best friends on that trip. And she kind of, uh, she had a rough home life, and she didn't really want to go home. And we were at an incredible church, and um, she was going to come and just, you know, come live with us. And so we, I mean, the whole thing, I was like, yeah, come, come, come. And there would be certain days I definitely doubted it. Um, At the time, I didn't realize I was like anxious about it. And so I would just be like, okay, God, give me peace. Just, is this really supposed to happen? Give me peace. If it's not, and you know, you do the prayers of like, God, if it's not you, then just tell them. You know, have you ever prayed that? I always do that. I'm like, if this isn't you, then just, you know, they'll just tell me no. I don't want to worry about having to hear an answer from you. Um, and so, anyways, she's going to come. I mean, she has, like, this whole going away party. She tells all of her family, all these different things. Um, <laughs> and, again, the whole time I'm kind of doubting it. Um, but, again, I thought it was the enemy. I was like, oh, that's just the enemy. This is going to be healing for her. This is going to be the best thing that's ever happened to her. Um, he's just trying to bring division in our friendship, all these different things. So I'm fighting this feeling of doubt, right? Um, and so about, I don't even know, less than two weeks, I know. It might have been a week. I wake up at like six in the morning. I'm sick to my stomach. I'm shaking to my core, and I go to my bathroom and throw up. And I said, God, what is that? I'm so anxious. And he said, Jordan does not need to live here. And I was like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> and what I, this is so important to me because this happened a lot in my life. I was going to move and work at this huge church in Austin. They had already hired me. I was going to take over this girl's lease. I had peace about it the whole time. Um, got to, like, two weeks out, same thing. Nope, don't feel right. Going to back out. And what I didn't understand is that when peace guides us, God doesn't lead. Okay, let me say this. When God leads through peace, when there's an absence of peace, it's always a sign of his leading because peace is not there. I don't think that God leads through anxiety is what I'm saying. But I think that when he leads through peace, there's there's a reality that when you don't have peace, that's also a leading and a sign for you to follow. Does that make sense? Okay. And that's why I believe there's so many times, like, I've spent my life, I mean, like, countless hours praying against feelings that were actually feelings that should have led me into what God was actually doing, if that makes sense. Okay. Second function of peace, it protects us. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, Philippians 4, 7, we've read this one, will guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus. Peace is what guards our hearts and our mind. If we don't have peace, we are left vulnerable. It's not walls that protect us. (laughs) It's not performance that protects us. It's not, let me just be a wall follower. Let me sneak in. Let me sneak out. Let me not get to know anyone. Let me put my hands up like this. You know, that only does nothing good for you. It isolates you. And that, there's not peace in that. The only thing that actually guards your heart and your mind is peace. 
Where there's a lack of trust, there is a lack of peace, which means there's a lack of protection and we are even more following the cycle of lies. We're more likely to believe the lies. I, and I, I, I've never seen it like this, but I think in my life, I'm, I'm just looking back and I'm like, man, when I'm encountering God's peace, when I know I'm in submission to his will, when I'm in prayer and thanksgiving and just having those grand old days, like, it's really because I ha- I'm not believing lies in the moment. But where there's n- a lack of peace, there's also the believe in a lie somewhere. And then the more that we're unaware of that, the more lies we feed into it, and then it almost seems it's not hard to obtain peace because peace is within, but it it makes it harder to trust, which then makes it harder to obtain peace. (laughs) It's like, I hope this is making sense. Like, it's all just one big interweaving of stuff. Okay, so the third function of peace. Peace guides us. Peace protects us. The third function of peace is it's actually our witness. Peace is our witness. When we have peace, we actually have something that people notice is different. Because peace only comes, right, through belief and submission in God. And there's a world out there that may not believe in him. But when they see, oh, wow, they may not even say, like, oh, you really carry peace. They may. But peace is our witness. In Galatians 5.22, it says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love. Okay, time out. Let me just say this really quick. This is not just a cute little verse that we, you know, we talk about and we say, okay, these are the fruits of the Spirit. This is actually the fruit of the Spirit. Okay, so if there's a tree and the fruit of a tree is an apple, then we know it's an apple tree, correct? Yes. Um, And so basically when it says the fruit of the Spirit, this is the manifestation of the Spirit. The manifestation of the apple tree is an apple. So this is the fruit of the Spirit, meaning that where the Spirit is, the Holy Spirit is, this is how people will know that the Holy Spirit actually is residing within you. Does that make sense? Because this is the evidence. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against these things there, there is no law. So peace is actually a fruit of the Spirit. Where the Spirit dwells, this is another way of putting it, where the Spirit dwells, there is peace. Where you find peace, you find the Spirit. Where you find the Spirit, you find peace. Because peace is a manifestation of the Spirit. The good news for us is that the Spirit resides within us. The same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead actually resides within us. When you ask the Lord to become your Savior... He comes upon you. He comes within you. He comes, there's just so many ways that he comes. But specifically, I'm talking about within you. I think the main thing that I really want you to get is that peace is within you. It's not something you go find. It's not something you search for. It's actually a relationship with God that says, God, I trust you. And in that, the automatic response, the automatic fruit, the automatic reward of trusting in God is peace. Matthew 5, 9 says this, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. Peacemakers. That's different than peacekeepers. We are called to be peacemakers, not peacekeepers. And the only way that we can make peace is because peace resides within us. When God spoke, he created. When we speak, we create. If the spirit of God is within us and we carry peace within us, the essence of peace, when we speak, peace is released. Does that make sense? You create the things that are within if you believe in them. Because it talks about out of the, you know, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So if you're, you're, the abundance of your heart is fear and chaos and anxiety, then when you speak, that's what you create. Have you ever been around someone and you're talking about something and they're just like telling you all the things, well, what if this happens and what if this happens and what if the, the ceiling crashes down upon us and you're just like, all of a sudden it's like the spirit of fear has just be, like been released into the room because in someone's heart there's fear going on and it changes everything. Your hope can be womp, sucked out. It doesn't have to be because you have power over that, but it can be because what's going on in your heart is actually what you release. Let's read this story. We're about to... F- I'm about to show you it's biblical. 
Mark 4, 35 through 41. That day, when evening came, he said to his disciples, he's Jesus in the boat with his disciples, right? Let us go over to the other side, leaving the crowd behind. They took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, you don't care if we drowned? He got up, rebuked the wind and the waves, Quiet, be still. And the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. So Jesus is in the boat with the disciples. He's actually um, told them to go. Let's go over to the other side. The storm comes, and they're freaking out, and he's sleeping, which is two completely different things, correct? Um, and he, they're concerned, so their fear, their, their fear is like, Jesus, do you not care if we drown? Like, do you, do you not care? So they're releasing fear. He wakes up, speaks to the storm, and he releases peace. What does he say? Peace. Be still in the waves, and everything listens to him. This is what I've learned from this story, is you can't give away what you don't have. Meaning, the reason Jesus could get up to the storm and speak to the storm is because he was in a place of rest and peace when the storm came, and he was able to speak and release something that was possessed within. The reason... <laughs> that the disciples never thought to do that is because how are you supposed to release something that you don't have within? Your external environment many times reveals your internal environment. If things are chaotic around you, more than likely that's what you're releasing. I'm not saying it's absolutely 100% true. But what I'm saying is that a lot of times... <laughs> We spend our time trying to obtain peace. And in the midst of it, we don't realize it's actually within. Therefore, we can't create it and make it as we were called to do as believers, as children of God. Blessed are the peacemakers. How do you make peace? Remain in a place of peace and release it. How do you do that? Have you ever been in a situation and I just think of like something critical happening? Um, or like... I, I don't know, I'm just seeing it right now, like just EMS and all these different people are in like freaking out, like it's like urgent, you know, this person's about to die, someone's doing CPR and someone's, blah, blah, blah. it's like everybody's moving around and it's just chaotic and then I just picture Jesus coming in and just being like, peace. <laughs> Everything changes. Why? Because he's not operating out of fear. He actually has something that he can release into a storm that will actually change the trajectory of what's happening. Because he trusts and believes in what's inside of him, in the power within him, and who God says he is, and that when the Father says, move, he moves. This is not just like, oh, peace. This is actually like, no, you have no choice but to bow to my words because I carry a power that is much bigger than my problem. This is peace. <laughs> it's not some good little, oh, okay, I feel good today. I'm, I'm at peace. No. It's violent. <laughs> but it's so genuine and soft at the same time. But do you understand the power? It guards your heart. It guards your mind. If your mind's going crazy, if you feel like, oh, my gosh, I'm just mentally unstable right now, then you don't need Stability. You need trust in God so you can obtain peace. We can't give away what we don't have. I'm going to close with this. Y'all can all stand up. This is what I want everyone to know. Is we are all called to peace. If we are not walking in peace, it's because we've settled for a lesser standard than our, what our trust in God could be. And again, there's no shame. Man, like I had a chaotic week and I was literally like, God, I don't know if I'm one supposed to be doing this because I might speak something and then everyone's going to crazy. It's not that serious, but... 
Like, that's how I felt. But I know that my trust in God is bigger than everything that's going on. I know that it's bigger than everything that's going on. And in that place, there's peace. In that focus on God, there's peace. In that thanksgiving, in that prayer, man, these songs are so perfect. I was like, wow, this is incredible. God, thank you for all that you've done. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I can't say thank you enough. In that place, I find peace. In worship, when I focus on him, it's all about you. I find peace. We all desire and deserve peace. I don't know. I believe that that's what God was showing me is that there's this lie of like, I don't deserve peace. I've messed this up. I've done this. It's my fault. You know that God's so good sometimes, most of the time, all the time? It's up to him. Um, He'll get you out of messes that you got yourself in. That's a mindset we can't understand. You made the mess, you clean it up. I deserve peace. I deserve to have to climb out of this hole. It doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter what decisions you've made. It doesn't matter what you've put on your kids. It doesn't matter what you've brought into a relationship. It doesn't matter what you've said. What matters is that God is good, and that doesn't change. You trust in that, and there's peace. You deserve peace. I really want to break the mindset of, like, peace is hard to find. Jesus said, seek me and you'll find me. Knock and the door shall be open. It's pretty simple. He didn't say seek peace and you'll find peace. He said, seek me and you'll find me and in me there'll be peace. We've got to quit seeking peace because maybe that's just God saying no. Or maybe it's God inviting you into an invitation of intimacy and deeper trust with him. So every time that you're feeling anxious or fearful, I just want to challenge you to say, God, help me believe in you because there I know will rest my peace. There I will find peace. (laughs) We're going to have a few people up here to pray for people, but I really want to hit some of these points. If you're in the category of man, like, I just have a hard time trusting. Maybe you, you know, have prayed for something and haven't seen it come to pass. Or maybe you prayed for something and the opposite happened. And if there's any level of, like, God, I don't feel like I can come close to you because I, I, like, you're, there's almost a resistance of, like, yeah, you can have my hand, but I don't want you to hold me. Or God, like, just that there's just a disconnection somehow. That there's trust issues. Or if you deal with anxiety, I'm so sick of anxiety. Like I have this righteous anger towards anxiety. And the only way that it's beaten is through peace. Which is trusting in God. If you deal with anxiety, I would love to pray for you. Hopelessness. If you've just been in a season and you're like, man, like even the things I love to do are just not fun or I can't dream anymore. I used to dream all the time. Or if you're just feeling hopeless, like you get up and you have zero motivation. You have nothing to look forward to. You have no vision. There's no like we're going somewhere with this. You're just here. And I've been there. I mean, the last eight months. (laughs) I've been there. So I want to pray for you. And I really know, like, I don't just believe. Like, I know 100% that God's going to do a work, that God's going to heal anxiety. Did you know that it's his desire to heal anxiety? It is not something we're begging his hand to move on. He's actually saying, would you just come into agreement with me that this is done? Would you come into agreement with the words that I've spoken over your situations? Would you just come into agreement with me? Because again, his standard of living for us, and when I say standard, I know it carries a negative connotation, but his desire, his longing that he desires us to live in is nothing less than heaven's standard. What a good God. 
that that's how much he wants for us. Not so you can say, oh, hey, hey, good job. You're actually living in heaven's standard. But no, because out of the heart of a father comes a desire and a longing for nothing less than the very best that he died on the cross for you to have. There's something so holy about that. God is crying for your freedom as much as you are crying for your freedom. God wants that healing more than you want that healing. God wants that promise to come true more than you want that promise to come true. just want everyone to close their eyes. If you're on our ministry team, you can make your way to the front. God, I thank you that what we have settled to be our normal is not your normal. Well, just everyone is afraid. Well, everyone has anxiety. God, that we wouldn't normalize anything less than heaven's standard for ourselves. God, we say that we acknowledge you as the Prince of Peace. That you can come in And you have come into our hearts. And so, God, every mountain that stands before us recognizing the power and the peace that you carry in our hearts, we say you must bow down to the perspective in the face of Jesus. God, we say that anxiety will no longer plague us. That fear will no longer be our go-to. God, that right now, The generational curses of, oh, this is just normal, or this is how my mom was. God, that you've taken care of that. The fear will no longer lead us, but your presence and your peace will. God, that thankfulness will rise up in our hearts like never before. That we will acknowledge the good things that you've done and the good things you're going to do. God, that we not only believe what you say, we're going to put faith in your words. There's a scripture, and it's, it talks about how you, they um, didn't see what happened because they didn't put faith in the words. So, God, I just declare right now that you're bringing words up in people's mind. And, God, we wouldn't just hear the words, but there would be a deposit of faith into what you say because we know that your words never return void. God, we just say that we surrender. We surrender to your goodness. There's nothing to lose in surrender because God always has something more and better. So God, we surrender. We speak to our hearts and we say, peace, rise up. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding, all of our questions that we have, all of our whys, all of our what ifs. God, we silence those and we say, peace, rise up. 